I drove against a cheater. This guy had over 400 competitive races to his name, lap records, multiple prizes, but now, after all this time, he's been banned. Cheating in esports and gaming is a problem. YouTubers like Carl Jobs put out a video almost every other week exposing another scandal. Whether it be cheaters in speedrunning, Guitar Hero, people blindfold cheating, it's an epidemic. But thankfully, with modern methods, it's becoming easier to say with 100% certainty whether someone is cheating or not. But what if there was a genre of game where it can be almost impossible to detect if someone's cheating? Where a cheater can just claim to be better or have a different style? And most people then give them the benefit of the doubt, where the margins of cheating can be so small it can drive other competitors insane. Welcome to sim racing. This problem spans across all sims. Last year, the F1 esports community was on fire with the amount of accusations they had. The level of competition is so high there, but just being one tenth a lap quicker than your opponents can have you absolutely swarmed with accusations of cheating. In a set of Corsa last year, Jimmy Broadbent hosted a tournament where the prizes were karting and I think I could drive in some of his personal cars. And someone with really questionable driving won the whole thing. However, afterwards, he was finally finally exposed for cheating throughout the whole thing, and he thankfully got disqualified. Now this is also a problem in Assetto Corsa Competizione, which is the sim that I play. A while back, Kirill Sadirov was exposed for cheating by Dara McCormack on Twitter. Eventually, Sadirov completely admitted to cheating and claimed it's just because everyone else does it. <laughs> which I guess is just one of the many motives of people that do cheat. And with no anti-cheat in ACC and some of these other titles, it becomes really difficult to 100% with certainty just say, that person is cheating. Even in the insanely obvious cases where someone is like a second a lot quicker than everyone else, it's very, very hard to just prove it. This leads to people then arguing on their behalf, uh, saying stuff like, maybe he's just got a unique driving style. Maybe it's the setup. Uh, maybe you're just mad because he's better. And if the guy who's cheating also just says, I'm not cheating, then it can sometimes come off as a witch hunt and jealousy. And then on the flip side to this, some people can maliciously claim that a legit driver is cheating, and then they have to jump through some hoops to prove their innocence. But to give you guys an idea of how hard it is to detect, it's time to dive into my recent experience. ACC is a GT3 simulator at heart. And that's the class that 99% of all eSport races and competitions are held on. However, there are other classes of cars in the game. You've got GT4s, Porsche Cup cars, GT2s, and a few others. Uh, one of them being the BMW M2 TCX class. These cars are the slowest in the game and they're quite easy to drive. So if you do manage to get a handful of eSport drivers, it makes for extremely close racing. However, there are basically no competitions using these cars. So almost all the top players just never drive them. So if you do hop into an M2 race, uh, you're never gonna find you know, the absolute tippy top uh, of the best drivers in there. Now LFM, which is the main platform for ACC daily races, uh, they do have seasons dedicated to the other classes of cars. LFM hosts daily races for the M2 class. Now, although they're not very popular, they do have prizes at the end of each season. They're not huge prizes, but it's something. And the guy who we're about to get onto here has been absolutely smoking the competition, destroying anyone who dives into this class. Sometimes it's by miles, sometimes he only wins by a little bit. But either way, in almost all his races, he has been just dominating. Now from what I've gathered, it seems like he got a bit of a reputation for being just an absolute beast in this car. But as time went on, suspicions started to arise in the community when he started driving a different class, the GT4s. I guess he was getting a little bit more confident in his cheating. He started posting some lap times to the leaderboards where the custom BOP is then set. And his laps were outrageous. He was six tenths of a lap quicker than Luke Whitehead. If you guys don't know about him, he's probably one of, if not the best hot lapper in the game. So, you know, I could understand someone being a little bit quicker than him. There's always time somewhere, right? But this guy was miles quicker. And in these lower classes, there's not that much you can do on the setup. So this is mostly all down to driving, which just begged the question, how?
Well, this is where my story begins, as I signed up to an M2 multi-class race for fun, and he was one of my competitors. Now, I had zero knowledge of his previous shenanigans, so this was my genuine live reaction to what I saw. Right, so Lettinen is quick, right? We know this. Lettinen is fast. Carpet is very fast. Orlo, I don't know, but you guys are saying he's fast. Should we ride on board with Orlo? You guys are saying he's a god. Let's figure it out. Let's figure out how to go quick. Oh, ba doing, ga doing, doing. Well, he is very all over the place on those brakes. Dude, these inputs are funny on the brake. This guy is not trail braking at all. Just look at this. Mega braking. Dude, how is that working? I don't know how he's actually turning the car. I'm just thinking maybe that uh, guy who we're watching. He could potentially be on controller. Because the way he's braking is very, very weird. So it makes sense if he's a controller player. That, that doesn't make sense to me. Go, 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 go! You can't not trail break in this car, though. That's what's baffling me, because, like, it doesn't turn. You know, you don't trail break, then you don't turn, you know? Two temps lost! What? How? Another temp! What is happening? What, what is actually happening? I, I, I don't understand. I'm absolutely pulling away by miles to the guys behind. But this is just ridiculous. A point four. What? <laughs> Losing time to the car in front in sector two. I just need to remember to save the uh, replay after this, guys. That's, uh, I definitely need to remember to save the replay. Um, I'm not saying anything, guys. I'm not saying anything. Um, I will allow LFM to speak for me. I'm not, guys, I'm not going to say anything because I'm not in the position to be able to 100% say something. But I'll let you guys in the chat determine. You, you know, you guys can think what you want. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to do a little bit of digging and uh, hopefully it gets sorted because that's that's not right. So some of you guys may have spotted already from the clips of my stream and especially the little clip there of his best lap from qualifying. Uh, there's some major red flags in his driving. However, I also suspect a lot of you guys watching have no idea, and that's absolutely fine because it's really hard to detect if you're not at the very, very top level. So we're going to break it down, and hopefully it's easier for you guys to spot in the future. So I'm going to break it down into four main parts, and these are the four things that convinced me that this guy was very, very sus. Number one was his lap times. They were absolutely unbelievable. Secondly was his tire wear throughout the race. He was achieving almost PB lap times at the very end of the stint, which is unrealistic for this car. Now, remarkable lap times require remarkable driving, and unfortunately that isn't what's on display here. This car is very similar to iRacing brake physics, where going into the ABS is quite bad, and you really want to avoid using the maximum brake pressure if you can. But as you see here, he goes absolutely full brake, full lock of the wheel over. He's, he's 90 degrees to the left on the wheel with full braking, which is just outrageous. Uh, and if we compare this directly to the Go Setup Lab, uh, I mean, they're just barely approaching 50%, so it's just not correct, it's not realistic. 
And it gets pretty embarrassing if you watch his inputs going into Brooklyn's. You want to trail break, so be a little bit hard on the brakes initially, then slowly lift off all the way throughout the corner. And he's just on max brake for almost the whole thing. So it's, it's actually insane. And then uh, if you actually watch a, a good person drive this corner uh, from the go setup lap, they're trailing all the way until the final green astro on the left curb. So it's, it's just so telling. And the final red flag for me, which is just the amount of traction he gets, he actually applies like a lot more steering input on some of these exits. And when you're running 0TC, that's just a recipe to spin. Uh, you got to be quite cautious on the exits, even though this car is not too powerful. Uh, you're running zero traction control. And look here, he actually starts applying more uh, steering input there as he's exiting the corner with full power. So it just doesn't work. So how did it feel to race against someone like this? It sucked. Now this right here is enough evidence for me to personally completely label him as a cheater. My credentials, I have six and a half thousand hours on this game. I've won two SRO championships and one of the only major BMW M2 events that there ever was competitively was the VCO championship. And I won that against some of the best drivers in the world, not just ACC. Uh, Redline in the finals, for example, I managed to beat them. This isn't me trying to gloat or anything. This is just me trying to show you guys that I do have experience, especially in this car, and I know when something is sus. The driving he was displaying there is the exact opposite ways of going fast. So after this race, people were rightfully pissed, especially because I live streamed the whole thing, and more evidence came out. Turns out he'd been cheating on other games, uh, Forza Horizon, uh, Project Cars, ACC Console, and he'd also cheated to get prizes as well. Even though some have been scrubbed, there's still videos on YouTube showing this. And it's all because he left his gamer tag in his LFM profile. <laughs> I also reported him to LFM, and then they conducted their own investigation. Now, although I'm not exactly sure of the methods that they used to determine it, they 100% deemed him to be cheating, and now he is completely banned from the platform. After years of trying to sneak under the radar, he got a bit too greedy. I also managed to obtain some of his MoTeC data, which is basically all the data of what his car is doing, and it goes into insane details. And this was public, so people in the community compared his MoTeC data compared to the Go lap data, which is probably the best lap that's been done currently with the car. And if you compare his braking and turning to the G-forces he's creating, it's absolutely ridiculous. This is the Go lap data, and now this is his data. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see something is wrong there. Since being banned, Orlo has made a response in the comments section on one of Jardine's videos for some reason, and he is claiming full innocence. He has never cheated in anything in his life. It goes against his morals, even though he was caught cheating on three other games in the past. But I thought I'd just put that out there in his defense a little bit, I guess. Now, referring back to the start of the video, even with this substantial evidence, can we prove that it is 100% fact that this guy's cheating? Sadly, no. But when the red flags are just overwhelming, I think a decision just has to be made, and I think the right one was made, and this guy deserves to be banned. He's made no attempts to prove his innocence either, so in my opinion, the case is closed. So where do we go from here? Kunos could maybe try to implement some sort of anti-cheat uh, to drastically cut down on the amount of these drivers. Will that happen? I don't know. But honestly, I've, I'm ending this video on a high because I'm a little bit more positive than most others out there on this situation. Thankfully, a lot of these cheaters have so many red flags that if they do start trying to compete at these top levels, it becomes quite easy to spot. And they always end up just getting a little bit too cocky and trying to achieve times that are just flat out impossible. Eventually, they leave too many clues. Now, this isn't a call to just accuse anyone who is faster than you as a cheater. This is just a way to show what is very suspicious in someone's driving if they're also able to achieve these crazy lap times. And hopefully this helps the community spot these kind of cheaters earlier in the future. Now with LFM, if you're a little bit unsure about someone's driving, you can always make a request to them. Obviously only do this if you have seen a lot of red flags, but don't feel awkward about it. For example, if a ticket was opened up about me from LFM for cheating, I take it as a compliment. Someone thinks I'm so fast that I must be cheating and I can provide all the evidence, all the MoTeC, anything they need to prove my innocence. And if I was cheating, 
I get banned. So it's a win-win. It's a very, very difficult situation, but let me know your thoughts and what you think needs to be done going forward. I wasn't really expecting to make a video like this or to be in a lobby with a driver like this. I was very on the fence, but I think it needs to be talked about still. It is harming sim racing, and having personally experienced it, it really did open my eyes to just how much it sucks. Hopefully with AC Evo, this can be something that can be addressed. In short, cheating competitively sucks. So don't cheat. Or else, you then suck. Bye guys, thanks for watching.